much for joining us again on The Conscious Mind. Today we have got a very, very special guest with us, and he's taken some time out of his very busy schedule to see us. It's Dr. Joe Dispenza. Uh, some of you will probably recognize him from the movie What the Bleep. And today he's joining us here in London. And to talk to us a little bit about more about consciousness and the mind. And the first question I have for you today is about collective consciousness. And something that's always fascinated me is the connection between the collective consciousness, this super consciousness, and our individual mind. So the connection between the, the quantum suit and then the chemical. So it's actually a great question. Let's start out with the definition of consciousness, okay? Consciousness is both universal and personal. It's both objective and subjective. Which means that if we look at the word consciousness, it means awareness. So there is an intelligence or an order that's keeping planets rotating around the sun. It's keeping um, supernovas being born at distant galaxies. At the same time, it's forcing a lily a to bloom. Mm -hmm. That intelligence has a awareness and an order uh, in which it uh, maintains and sustains life. Uh, it's invisible, which means that it has a, a, If you look at an atom, let's just give you an example. If we start breaking an atom down and tearing it apart and looking to see the substance of an atom, we find out that 99 percent of it is just empty space. So it's that empty space that begins to lower its frequencies to produce matter. Okay? So if we understand that then, we could say that, that <clears throat> there is an unseen force or an unseen hand that's organizing all of uh, the natural world. Now, the personal aspect of consciousness is that intelligence that's keeping your heart beating, and digesting your food, and filtering blood and making 10 million cells every second. Few people ever take the time to acknowledge that there's a power within them that's taking care of business. And yet, people call it the God within, the power within, the greater mind, the mother, father, life, or, or the life force, innate intelligence. But whatever we want to call it, <clears throat> it's that personal aspect within us that's giving us life. Now, if we can begin to see that the consciousness that is universal is the same consciousness that is personal, we could say that that awareness carries intelligence and it carries information. So everything that we learn and experience as human beings, from the least experience to the greatest adversity, to the, to the activity of bacteria, um, to the migration of birds, is all stored in the intelligence of that universal intelligence. And our job as individuals is to learn and embrace things in life. And when we learn and embrace things in life, we add that knowledge and information, that wisdom, into the soup of intelligence, okay? Now, <clears throat> frequency carries information. This is a very, very high frequency. And as that frequency lowers, that information goes from invisible to material. Now, I'm getting to your answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, when we begin to use the brain to understand the meaning of the external world and our internal world, mm -hmm. the brain uh, in action or the brain at work is called mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mind is what the brain does. Consciousness now, streams of consciousness that move through the brain or the brain facilitating consciousness produces mind. So mind is the byproduct of consciousness moving through the brain. Gotcha. Okay. Got it? Yeah, yeah. So now, if we produce a consciousness of joy, mm -hmm. that um, downward causation, the side effect of neurons firing mm -hmm. different thought patterns has a chemical signature yeah. that then instructs the body for us to feel what that consciousness is embraced in the brain as. Mm -hmm. So if a person has a sexual fantasy, for example, they're processing a stream of consciousness mm -hmm. through the brain, producing the mind of sexuality. The sexual experience in the brain then prepares the body for the event, and so chemistry is released, and the person has a physiological response. Mm -hmm. If the person's thinking about being competitive, or if they're thinking about um, the adversity of something that they're facing. Mm -hmm. Her brain is now 
picking up a stream of consciousness. It's causing certain circuits to fire, producing a certain mind, which is releasing certain peptides or neuropeptides in the brain. It turns on the adrenal glands, and now that person has adrenaline, and they're ready now to embrace the environmental cue based on their mind. So the chemistry, then, is a downward signature of consciousness that's specific to different levels of mind. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know it does. So it is, it's, it's almost like a downstepping right. of the frequency into the physical from the more, from the higher frequencies down from to the mass. the theoretical down to mass. Okay. And, and um, it's, a, it's a natural causation of how things occur. So it's a natural way of things how things occur. Absolutely. As, if I'm understanding you right, it's also, you're also saying that we are, there is no separation really between the super consciousness or the soup, the soup of, of um, photons and electrons and us. We are, we are as part of it as it is. Well, it's a, we're immersed in the dream because yeah. <clears throat> nothing here is actually solid. <clears throat> According to quantum physics, we have vibrations of particles that, by our observation, appears as solid. But at the same time, we are made of the same stuff, right? So we're immersed in the dream, uh, experiencing the same frequency as matter. Um, but when we get to higher levels of consciousness, as we begin to process more. Um, uh, uh, elevated thoughts, we abandon the physical realm mm -hmm. to process those those thoughts. Okay. And uh, the key is to be able to maintain a modified state of mind and body to to process a new thought and allow that new thought then to show up somewhere in our future. That's the key. Ah. You can't do it. You can't do it thinking that this is real. Yeah. You have to go to that place where. You know, we have the capacity to make thought more real than anything else. Mm -hmm. And by developing that skill of observation, we could potentially observe a future mm -hmm. that hasn't occurred yet, <coughs> occurred yet but mm -hmm. exists as a potential.